In this video, we're going to be looking at factorizing a difference of two squares. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if you all know that factorizing is the opposite of multiplying out brackets, so if we consider the expression p plus b, and we multiply that by a minus b, using FOIL, we end up with a times a gives us a squared, the outsides we get negative AB, the insides we get positive AB, and then the lasts we get negative B squared. When all of that is simplified we end up with A squared minus B squared because these two terms cancel each other out. Now, if A plus B times A minus B gives us A squared minus B squared, then it must be true that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b multiplied by a minus b. Okay, if the statement is true from left to right, then it's also true from right to left. Okay, now it's this pattern that we have to use when we're factorizing a difference of two squares. This here is our template, and we have to notice that whenever we have one square term, minus another square term. That's a difference of two square terms. That's a difference of two squares. Whenever we have that, then all we need to do is open up a double bracket, and in the first position in each bracket, we put the square root of the first term that we had, and the first square term that we had, and then in the second position of each bracket, we put the square root of the second of our square terms. And then one bracket ends up being positive, one bracket ends up being negative. Okay, so let's look at a few uh, examples and before we do anything else we'll just write our template up at the top again just that we can keep it in mind. Okay, so we said a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b multiplied by a minus b. Okay, so let's look at a few examples and let's see how we get on. Okay. Now, the first of our examples, let's go with x squared minus 9. Okay. Now, both of these are square terms. x times itself gives us x squared. 3 times 3 gives us 9. And because we have this minus, we know it's a difference of two squares. So all I need to do is fill in the first position in each bracket with the square root of x squared, which is just x. And then I fill in the second position in each bracket with the square root of 9, which is 3. One bracket's positive, one bracket's negative, and that's it. Question answered. Now, if we're asked to factorize, let's say, y squared minus 100, and again, following the same pattern, here we have y, because y is the square root of y squared, and here we have 10, because 10 is the square root of 100. One bracket positive, one bracket negative, and that says done. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, let's this time have a look at 4a squared minus 1. Now, is this a difference of two squares? Let's think about it. Well, what times itself gives us 4a squared? It would be 2a times 2a. What times itself gives us 1? 1 times 1 gives us 1. So these are both square terms, and we have a difference of two squares before us in this question. So 2a takes up the position, the first position in each bracket. 1 takes up the second position in each bracket. 1 bracket positive, 1 bracket negative, and that's us. Finished. Let's try one more. Let's do 100 b squared minus 81 open up our double bracket because what we have is a difference of two squares. 10b times 10b would give us 100b squared and 9 times 9 would give us 81. One bracket positive, one bracket negative, and that's us. Simple as that. Okay. Now, whenever you're factorizing or whenever you're asked to factorize, you have to go through a checklist. The first thing you've got to do is check to see whether or not there's a uh, common factor.
And then you can maybe check to see if there's a difference of two squares anywhere to be dealt with. And you can also keep your eyes peeled for a trinomial that can be factorized as well. So some questions will involve you to do more than one step of factorizing, if you like. So you may have to take out a common factor first and then deal with any differences of two squares that you may come across. So let's look at examples where we are asked to factorize and that factorizing process gets done in two steps. Okay, let's have a look first of all at 8p squared minus 8q squared. Now, any common factors here? Well, we know we can take out a common factor of 8. Now, what does that leave me with? That leaves me with p squared minus q squared. Now, the factor you take out has to always be the highest common factor. So, not 2, not 4, but 8 in this case. Now, what are we left with? p squared minus q squared. Now, I can deal with this. I can break this down further. If I stop here and don't give my full answer, then all I've done is partially factorize. You will not get the marks in a question fully unless you fully factorize. So what we've got is a common factor of 8 on the outside. Don't forget that. And then I'm just going to show you that what we've got, colored in red, can be broken down and factorized to give us p plus q, p minus q. And that's you done answering that question. OK, so we do it in two steps. You get a common factor, first of all, and then deal with the difference of two squares. OK, let's look at another one. Let's look this time at 4m squared minus 100. OK, now, um, any common factor I can take out? Yes, there is. I can take out a common factor of 4. Okay. What am I left with? I'm left with m squared minus 25. Now, what is this expression here? It's a difference of two squares. So I just write my common factor on the outside, the highest common factor, open up a double bracket because that's what I do when I'm faced with a difference of two squares, fill in the first positions with m, and fill in the second position with 5, one bracket positive, one bracket negative, and that's the question answer. How does that expression there fully factorized? All you're doing is putting in the brackets. Okay, let's look at one more question. Let's this time deal with um, 8x squared minus 50d squared. So 8x squared minus 50d squared. Now, what can we do here? What common factor can we take out? What's the highest common factor we can take out? That would be 4. Now, <clears throat> That leaves us with, in fact, it's not 4, because we can't take 4 out of 50. So common factor, highest common factor is just 2. And opening up my bracket, what am I left with? I would have 4x squared minus 25d squared. OK. Now, look at what's in the red bracket. That would be what's known as a difference of two squares, and we can use what we know, the template we have to fully factorize this, and we end up with 2 multiplied by 2x plus 5d, and then we multiply by 2x minus 5d, because 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared, and 5d times 5d gives us 25d squared. Okay, right then. So, I'm going to put up a few questions for you to do, so you can pause the video once set up, you can try them yourselves, and then see how you got on. Okay, so let's do a squared minus 4. Um, okay, we'll do a few. So, question 1, we'll do a squared minus 4. Question 2, we'll try and factorize 4b squared minus 25. Question 3, we'll look at 27c squared minus 12. Question 4, we'll look at 45m squared minus 5n squared. And finally, question 5, we'll look at 
9x squared plus 36y squared. Okay, so let's see if you can do these five questions, factorize these fully, and check back and see if your answers are the same as what we write up. Okay, so working through this, no common factor, so we'll launch in, factorize using your template for a difference of two squares, a plus two, a minus two. That's us finished. For this one again, no common factor. We've got a difference of two squares. So 2b plus five multiplied by 2b minus five. For the next one, common factor of three. So that gives us three multiplied by nine c squared minus four. Now, this here is a difference of two squares. So I can open up a double bracket after my common factor of three. And we write 3c plus 2, 3c minus 2. And that's as finished. For this one, highest common factor would be 5. Fill in out bracket, 5 times 9m squared minus 1n squared. So this here is a difference of two squares. So again, leave the highest common factor of 5 on the outside. Open up a double bracket. We end up with 3m minus n or plus n and 3m minus n. It wouldn't actually matter which bracket was positive and which was negative as long as you've got one positive, one negative, that will be the correct answer. Okay, and for this one, highest common factor would be 9 and we end up with the bracket being x squared plus 4y squared. Now, what do we do at this point? Nothing. Can't do anything because this is not a difference of two squares. This is a sum of two squares. We've got a plus here, not a minus. So we can't do anything. We've taken out our highest common factor. No trinomial to deal with. No difference of two squares to deal with. So that says reach the end of the line. Okay. So these are your answers. How did you get on? Hopefully. A difference of two squares will be easily factorized by you if it comes up in a test. Okay.